Back in the 1980s and 90s, people fought over the fate of Opal Creek, which is just south of Mount Hood. Well, Congress essentially ended that debate in 1996 when it set aside the old growth forest as wilderness. Now, a lot has happened to Opal Creek since then, so we sent Field Guide's own Vince Patton to see what's changed. Ancient forests measure time incrementally. Towering giants tick off the centuries. Water carves canyons over millennia. Yet just one decade after being set aside as wilderness, something new has arrived along Opal Creek. Children. Right. Do some people want to come with me this way? I do. Okay. The forest has become a classroom. This day, students from Hillsborough's City View Charter School eagerly search for amphibians. Okay, now I know a couple of good pools down here. If I could have a couple of people, you want to come? Okay. okay. Instructor Adam Mims leads second grader Fiona into the heart of prime habitat for the giant coastal salamander. You think you can make it to this little island out here? Yeah. Okay. I know I can do that. I, I can help you. This small gurgling stream reveals hidden inhabitants. Now this looks like a really good pool to me if you just look closely enough. Then we'll just carefully flip over one rock at a time. <gasps> that is cold. And they like the cold water. They need it because cold water holds more oxygen in. You got it. Yep, this is a giant salamander larva. Like the proverbial canary, amphibians signal if their ecosystem is healthy. That's cool. In the Opal Creek wilderness, life must be good. 15 amphibian species thrive here. And these guys can live for 35 or 40 years. Whoa. Yeah. The scientific name is Dicamptodon tenebrosus. That's a long name. Yeah, it is. Kind of a long name for this little looking guy, but they can get really big. I really believe in what we're doing, and you know, there's a good reason to be up here. Mims not only teaches in the forest, he has chosen to live here. I've been here four years. Home is Jawbone Flats, an old mining town not on most maps. Mims serves as operations manager for the Opal Creek Ancient Forest Center. It's giving Jawbone a whole new life. So here we have our commissary building. Uh, the old commissary, commissary here bridge. as it looked in 1985, was falling apart. Now it's getting its first facelift since the days of the Great Depression. The exterior wood is the original exterior wood. Uh, what they did actually was just flip it over. And so this is the side that hadn't gotten weather before. Complete with new solar panels from PGE, the commissary becomes a classroom with a lab. It's great because we have the greatest outdoor classroom, and now when we get back from the field, we'll have this spectacular indoor space. The rest of town is off the grid, too. Electricity comes from water diverted three quarters of a mile away and directed to spin a generator. This generator is making all the power for the camp. Right now, we're making almost 10 kilowatts of power, which is a lot for us. After the tour of the powerhouse, Mims does something that comes second nature for the Forest Center staff. He takes a drink straight out of the outflow of Flume Creek. It's been a water supply for camp for 77 years, and it's great. The very fact that crystal pure water exists provides a constant reminder as to why people wanted this valley preserved. It's the ancient forest itself. To see why the water runs so clear, Forest Center Program Director Katie Ryan leads us a mile up Opal Creek. She doesn't focus on the stream. Instead, it's the trees at the end of the trail. This is Cedar Flats. Here, a grove of trees has lived since 500 years before Columbus set foot in the New World. These big ones are close to 800 to 1,000 years old. These monsters right here. It's nice and flat here, collects water for them, makes them 
go nice and big. That's why you see the true elements of an ancient forest, because it's so large, it's, it's complete, it's intact. It's not, you know, just a little sliver that's left. The water she drinks every day starts up here. But why is this water so clean? It goes back to that concept of the ancient forest. The whole watershed is protected. The ancient forest filters itself. It's acting as, as it's supposed to. Its sheer size sets this wilderness apart. From ridgetop to ridgetop, the entire valley sits off limits to logging and development. The Opal Creek watershed, the whole thing is preserved, which is rare. You know, you don't find a whole watershed preserved. This is not an academic argument for the benefit of the few who live at Jawbone Flats. Pure filtered streams feed Opal Creek, which merges with Battleaxe Creek, which creates the headwaters of the Little North Fork of the Santiam River. And it's, it's Salem's drinking water. You know, consider if, if people wanted to cut in the bull run. You know, that's Portland's drinking water. Tom Atia serves as acting director for the Ancient Forest Center. His roots run deep here. Oh yeah, I grew up here as a kid. I would run around these trails like it was my backyard. It was his family that operated the mines here, digging out zinc and lead. But they did not use the chemicals many mines use, so the stream below is not contaminated. This stream runs year round too, never dries up. So it's a classic example of a multi-storied ancient forest. While many visitors notice the giant western red cedars, dug firs, and Pacific yews, Atia notices the smaller trademarks of an ancient forest. It's a whole carpet here. Duff, the forest's own natural decomposition, feeds layers of moss and lichen as thick as wall-to-wall -wall carpet. And all that's from things that have fallen out of the trees up above. And you can't duplicate it. That takes, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years to do that. This is the best example of a low elevation wilderness or ancient forest in the United States. And here we are so close to Portland, Salem, and Eugene. Now, after a decade of federal protection, Opal Creek attracts 40,000 hikers a year and 2,500 students in classes for all ages. We converted a town. Yeah, Jawbone Flats uh, was an old mining town, and now it's uh, an education town where staff lives and people come and visit uh, either during the week or the weekend. And helping make the visit even more enjoyable, rebuilt cabins are now available to rent. Uh, we have new stove, on-demand hot water heater. And but while the accommodations are, are modern and water. comfortable, this is an ancient forest. Don't look for TVs in the rooms, and don't expect valet parking, or parking at all. Jawbone Flats may well be the only tourist town in the country that tells visitors they must walk three miles in to reach it. <laughs> and and I, I think that's cool. By the time people have walked the three miles to get in here, they've left their bad attitude behind. Nothing but joy shines in second grade eyes at the prospect of finding more critters. So do you guys remember how, how you tell the males from the females? Yes, yes. For instructor Claire Lukens, each pool holds another teachable life moment. Hey guys, if they're mating, don't disturb them, okay? Because they're mating. We don't want to disturb them while they're mating. Opal Creek sidewaters attract dozens of rough-skinned newts. He's right there. Oop. <laughs> you got him? Oh, get, him. get him before he goes away. There you go. A carefully captured newt may spend only minutes with these children, but wet fingers and wide eyes soak up a lifetime of learning. What kind of newt? Rough skin newt, that's right. I've heard a lot of people saying these are poisonous. They have a toxin in them. We and the children are reminded that all the lessons of amphibians and the forest itself revolve around this clear, cold water. If the trees get cut all around their stream and the temperature increases even a few degrees, they won't live there anymore. It's a really neat thing that's going on up here. All the clear water. <laughs>